Starting off in America was really great because um, I've just been really looking forward to playing the new record. Pretty much spent the second half of last year working on that really and we didn't get to play any shows so it's been two years since we've actually kind of got out there and played festivals or, or toured. So we're really looking forward to it but we actually came to America to play the album for the first time so that was really exciting because we were all kind of itching to do it and we toured with The Kills as well and that was back in April. Um, so that was our first kind of experience of playing the, the new record to, to a live audience and just being with The Kills was just a really good, good time as well. It's nice to have people you really get on with when you're touring. So we had a bit of a, a blast. I think the strange thing about it is uh, we're often asked this kind of question about this song standing out and sounding quite different. And um, the interesting thing is cause we didn't really think about that or notice it at the time, but it was actually the last song that we wrote. Uh, we were recording everything ourselves when we were in our own rehearsal room, that's where we worked on the record. And Sea Within the Sea was really the last track we worked on them. We were all really happy and excited about the work we had done and the songs we'd written and really enjoying playing together. So I think um, my way of explaining it has been that it was almost the point where you knew that something great had happened, like we were all really into the record, we were already beyond knowing that something great was going on, so Sea Within the Sea when we played it was just real just natural, easy, almost just, um, I don't know, final kind of point of, of us working on that, on that kind of, on primary colours, and I think that's what comes through, there's, there's no, this is the wrong, it can be sound the wrong way, there's, not no thought, but the thought process is just completely natural. You know, we were just playing, the sounds were kind of flying around, the words were coming together, and the whole song really just kind of happened, I suppose. Um, so it was just the most kind of natural expression of finishing up the record, I suppose. It's about journey and challenges, I mean, in the most general way. But I mean, yeah. It picks up a lot of on the other uh, other ideas going on throughout the album as well, so it really kind of encapsulates all the things and sounds and styles we were working on. And even over the process of writing the record, you know, different things would be coming in because we were working with different instruments, um, introducing different keyboards and experimenting with sequences and things like that we hadn't really done before. So things were really evolving and, and changing and moving as we were, as we were writing, which was what, one of the things that was so exciting about it. And that's why I see within the sea kind of brings all this together as well. Well, I think we learnt a lot from playing live. Um, when we started playing as a band the first time round, we, we just really were kind of a bunch of punks playing loud music for the first time, which is exactly what we wanted to do. We were expressing ourselves in the way that came most naturally, and it was fast and, and, and loud and exciting, and that's, we threw ourselves into it. You know? We weren't really thinking about what anyone else was going to think about it because we weren't really interested, we just wanted to play and um, we played our first show two weeks after our first rehearsal because we were just having such a great time and wanted to do it. And I think, you know, in two years of playing, uh, working, recording our first album, but especially the live experience, uh, you learn a lot as a musician and as a band, we came a lot closer together and we were working in different ways together. So um, we wanted to attack writing in a different way with this record. Um, and I think one thing we're really interested in doing is experimenting with sound and how sound can affect the listener. Like, we're all into all kinds of music, from electronic music to psychedelic music from the 60s, or whatever it might be, uh, you know, mad punk music from the late 70s. It has to be something that makes you feel a certain way, makes your body react, or a certain feeling in your chest or your head, and you know, you can experience it in different ways, and that was something we are really interested in working into the music, trying to affect people's kind of minds with what we were doing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the best, the best music is really evocative and, you know, it's obviously music is a personal experience for, for anyone listening to it. So, you know, if you're not making them feel anything, there's probably no point doing it. I don't really believe in uh, disposable music. I don't see that uh, as being any merit in making it. We were actually in America on tour. We were over here on a bus when um, um, Trent was Twittering about it, which is a world that we don't really get involved in, <laughs> that whole thing. Um, but anyway, so we were told, oh, Trent's been Twittering about how much he loves your album. <laughs> we were like, tweeting. It's tweeting, yeah. Okay. Trent, Trent Reznor was tweeting somewhere in LA. And, um, and obviously we were like, wow, that's, that's really, really amazing, you know. Um, especially someone who, as an artist, is really passionate about music, obviously about his band and has a passionate audience, but it's, you can understand as a, in a band that he has 
a similar passion about other artists and his love of music. So if anyone you know who you respect in that kind of way asks you to come and play with them or expresses a, an interest or a love of your music, it's just a really cool thing. So that's, what, that's kind of how it started. Um, we first met Jeff when we were asked to play a festival he was creating, All Tomorrow's Parties, in the UK. And that was just coming up to them playing their, their third album, or third, for the first time live. And we were all, kind of, we were all big fans anyway. I hadn't heard the record, and, um, and we were asked to do it, and we thought, well, this is great, we'll go and play it. It was one of the last shows we did with Strange House, and we were actually starting, we were already writing the record, and we were playing a few songs that we recorded for the album and a few other demos that didn't make it. Um, and that was the first night we met Jeff, and not only was it great to meet him and great to see them playing third, we also felt musically, a lot of people say, oh, horrors and portrait is a strange mixture, a strange combination, but we just, for us it makes perfect sense. Um, all of the references and the sounds and the way they kind of attack music is actually quite similar to the way we do, even if it sounds very different as an end result. But we felt strongly we wanted to work with a producer who attacked his you know, his side of things in the same way we do as musicians. And we didn't want to work with someone who goes to the same desk every day, uses the same tricks, you know. So, you know, he knows everything back to front and that's what he does, that's what he does every day with every band. And we knew that Jeff was someone that would take risks, experiment, try out new ideas, try things that shouldn't work, and that's kind of how we like to write. So, um, yeah, it was important for us to work with a producer who had that kind of mindset which is why we asked to work with him and then um, yeah it was good.